In this video, we will show you how to rehab golfer's elbow and discuss which management options work and which don't. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Medial epicondylalgia, better known as golfer's elbow, is a tendinopathy of the common wrist flexor and pronator muscle origin at the medial epicondyle. In comparison to its big brother, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow is four to seven times less common. This is also the reason why there is scarcity of literature from research when it comes to effective treatment options. So in this video, we will have to base a lot of our recommendations on general literature about tendinopathy, make a transfer from tennis elbow to the golfer's elbow and give advice based on personal experience. Like in lateral epicondylalgia, medial elbow pain often occurs in athletes involved in overhead throwing as well as golfers and tennis players due to repetitive overload. And as we're speaking, I've actually been suffering from a golfer's elbow due to tennis for about three months. Before we start discussing which exercises you should do, let's first start with what you should not do. First of all, tendons don't get better by rest. While you might get away with general rest in case of reactive tendinopathy, not loading your tendon will never help with a tendon in a stage of late disrepair or degeneration as it further decreases the tendon's capacity to take load. In our experience, most patients involved in overhead or racket sports report pain improvement when they stop their sport, but actually experience more pain and disability when they try to pick up their sport again after the break. Furthermore, recent research has shown that the inflammation seen in tendons is not the classical inflammation we see in other tissues of the body. On top of that, the literature shows that we are not able to change the pathological part of a tendon. That's where the expression, change the donut, not the hole, comes from. For these reasons, treatment options directed at decreasing inflammation or at changing the pathological part of the tendon don't make sense. Let's now look at a possible rehab program that does make sense. Number one decrease aggravating high and fast load activities. Like in other tendons, high and fast load activities, meaning that the tendon has to store and release energy quickly, are the main driver behind tendon overload. This is also why golfer's elbow is often seen in overhead athletes or racket sports that make use of the elastic action of the tendon at the elbow and wrist when throwing or hitting a ball. While it's not necessary to stop all high and fast load activities, it is recommended to reduce volume, so either frequency, duration or reps and intensity, to a level that the patient's pain aggravation settles within 24 hours after the activity. So in my personal case, I reduced the numbers of times I played per week from four to two or three and tried to avoid playing on consecutive days. Furthermore, I tried not to play matches in order to avoid serving. By doing this, I was able to break the downward spiral of my elbow getting worse and worse until pain stayed on a stable level at least. Number two, adjunctive options. Some patients have positive experiences with the use of braces, kinesio taping, dry needling, massage or ice. While these options can be added based on patient and therapist preference, be aware that none of these options will increase the tendon's capacity to bear load in the mid and long term. In my personal experience, the use of ibuprofen has a positive short-term effect on tendon pain and stiffness. Literature has also shown that it inhibits the expression of key ground substance proteins for tendon swelling in in vitro tendon preparations. At the same time, you don't want to end up being dependent on medication for more than a week or two that can possibly cause stomach problems. Number three, early rehab, heavy and slow resistance exercises. Like in other tendinopathies, the absolute basics for tendon rehab are slow and heavy resistance exercises. 
the go-to option to target the common origin of the wrist flexors are dumbbell curls with a weight that can be moved by the patient with tolerable pain for somewhere between 5 to 15 repetitions. If your patient doesn't have dumbbells at home, he or she can use a backpack filled with weight or just a water bottle. It's important to stick to a cadence to no faster than 2 to 3 seconds up and 2 to 3 seconds down as we want a slow load applied to the tendon. Have the patient perform plus or minus 3 sets every other day. This frequency is derived from Magnussen et al. in the year 2010 who have shown that intense loading of tendons resulted in a net collagen degradation of up to 36 hours. However, the loads included in the studies were huge like running for 36 kilometers. In my personal case, I prefer performing dumbbell curls on a daily basis for three sets with a weight that I can move around 10 times with tolerable pain. Try to challenge yourself or your patient and increase the number of reps and eventually the weight in the course of days and weeks. Next to the wrist flexors, you also want to target the pronator teres, whose tendon also originates from the medial epicondyle and which is also often affected. For this muscle and tendon, we are performing pronation with a head-heavy object like a hammer, a tennis racket or a broom. You can increase the resistance by adding more weight to the broomstick. Again, perform around 3 sets with 5 to 15 repetitions with a cadence of around 3 seconds and tolerable pain. Progress the exercise by doing more reps or by increasing the leverage or the weight. Number 4. Targeting the shoulder. A quick shout out at this point to our colleagues from E3 Rehab who have found two studies by Elmer Baut et al. in 2016 and Nabil et al. in 2019 showing that shoulder external rotation, extension and abduction peak torques are decreased in patients with tennis and golfer's elbow. If the shoulder muscles are not able to absorb load during overhead or racket sports, stress might be passed on to the distal joints of the upper joint. Therefore, it makes sense to include exercises that target external shoulder rotation like cable pulleys, abduction exercises like lateral races and shoulder extension exercises like pullovers. Number 5. Ulnar glides. According to Donaldson et al. in the year 2013, coexisting ulnar neuritis can be present in up to 50% of cases suffering from medial epicondylalgia. This means that we will not only have to focus on the tendons and muscles of the wrist flexors and forearm pronators, but also on the ulnar nerve. Click on the info button in the top right corner in order to learn how to examine the ulnar nerve. In order to target the ulnar nerve, you can perform ulnar nerve sliders and tensioners. We recommend starting with the less provocative sliders and moving on to tensioners as soon as sliders are tolerated well by the patient. To perform the slider at home, the patient is asked to abduct their shoulder, extend their wrists and fingers, pronate their forearm and flex the elbow. Then the hand is moved towards the head while moving the head and neck to the ipsilateral side at the same time in an attempt to move the ulnar nerve proximally. To move the ulnar nerve distally again, reverse both movements. To perform a tensioner, the same upper limb movements are performed now, only that the head is moved contralaterally. There's no strict number of repetitions, but we generally recommend to do around 10 to 20 repetitions several times per day on a daily basis. All right, so this was our video on golfer's elbow rehab. Of course, tennis elbow is the big brother of golfer's elbow and more common in the general population. If you're interested in a rehab program for tennis elbow, check out the video right next to me. This video is part of our Extremities online course. So if you want to build a great foundation of knowledge as a therapist, this course is for you. You can find the link in the description down below. As always, Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.